It is a case of the ups and downs. Gas prices up, 401ks down. Housing prices up, ability to buy them down. So what should you do? This week on Central Florida Spotlight, we have two experts, one who's known nationally and one who guides local investors, both here with free advice at a time where we all need it. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight. If you're like most folks, you probably have some understanding of the stock market and know that this constant nosedive isn't a good thing, at least in the short term. So today we bring in a man whose livelihood is to truly understand these valleys and occasional peaks and walk us through it, or at least walk us off the ledge. He's Lee Seiler, goes by the stock doctor. And Lee, we, we saw some nice rebounds this week. Are we to take stock in that, pardon the pun? Well, first of all, there are more peaks than valleys usually. It's just the valleys are really, really bad when we have them. And look, it's going to be choppy for the next several months. We're going to have to get through earnings season, and we need a better definition of what the Fed is going to do. Uh, they, they raised rates recently 75 basis points. They're likely going to do it again. They telegraphed 50 to 75 basis points. And their objective is they need to slow this economy down and try and put a lid on this inflation problem we have. Lee, have you seen anything like this? I mean, you study this. Have we gone through this before? Of course. It's never different this time. I, I mean, the only thing I could say when it was different this time was the pandemic, March of 2020. That was different this time. But what we're seeing here is the ebb and flow of market cycles and economic cycles. The economy gets hot. The Fed has to slow it down, and it just wash, rinse, and repeat. So we saw something like this in 08, 09. It's not going to be as severe as 08, 08, 09. We're not seeing a financial crisis. We're not seeing people lose their homes at the rate that they did back then. But this is very similar to 1994, where the Fed had to get really aggressive and raise rates six times in 94, and then once in January 95, just to curb inflation. President Biden said this week there's nothing inevitable about a recession. Are we to believe that optimism? I think that it's not a matter of if, it's when. A recession is absolutely inevitable. We're going to have a recession. I'm not saying it's going to happen this year. And in fact, I don't think it's in the cards for 22, but very possible is 2023. Look, the Fed, they try and they use the term soft landing but it's highly unlikely and they rarely ever actually give us a soft landing. But it wouldn't surprise me if we're already in a recession according to the technical terms. Mm. I don't think it's likely, but it wouldn't surprise me. Gas prices, 40 cents higher than they were just a month ago. Everything from rent to groceries up 12% from last year. Airfares up nearly 40%, inflation at 8.6%. Those numbers are shocking. Who's to blame here, or is there anyone or any administration to blame? Look, there's, there was a funnel effect. Uh, there was no activity for quite a long time, and everybody got money, and then all of a sudden, when you're allowed to spend it, we all spent it at once. So it's, I don't think it's anybody's fault. I'm not going to put the blame on the administration or Congress. What I'm going to put the blame on is we have a number of things. We have inflation because there's so much demand. The Fed's trying to curb that. We have uh, the potential of a recession. You have a war in Ukraine that, that we couldn't control. Uh, we have COVID still lingering out there. And you have Chinese lockdowns. I mean, it's really a perfect storm for what we're seeing right now. Interest rate hikes, you touched on them. Rising gas, we touched on that. Grocery prices, uh, we've touched on that. Home prices as well. You talked about 08, 09. Are we going to see a um, reduction in how much people's homes are, according to Zillow, worth? Okay, well, Zillow's not the most accurate place to get your home values. However, I will tell you this. I don't think that's likely an 08, 09 scenario, and I hope not, because uh, my house is finally back to a value it was in 07. But um, I think we still have a housing shortage here, especially in the state of Florida, and real estate, as you know, is extremely regional. There are going to be parts of the United States that you're going to have uh, a drop in home prices. I think Florida, Texas, states like that, where people are moving into in droves, I think we're certainly going to level off a little bit and maybe decline slightly, but nowhere near the 30, 40, 50, 60% decline we saw in housing in 08, 09. 
Beautiful Sunshine State is good for a lot of things, and maybe that is one of the, the great things. More to come from the stock doctor in our next segment, including his thoughts on the possibility of that recession and how much that would set all of us back who are thinking of retiring at some point in our lives. But can we retire next? Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight. Has your retirement been put off by these recent massive drops and occasional rises in the stock market? There is little doubt that 401ks don't look as good as they did several months ago. So let's bring back Lee Seiler, known as the stock doctor. And Lee, according to economists surveyed by Bloomberg this week, the odds of a U.S. recession in the next 12 months are rising. The probability now at 30%. That's double the odds from three months ago. You touched on it in the last segment about what a recession means. Means, but what does it mean for our retirements? Could it slow that possibility down and make us work more years? Well, that's a great question, and, and nobody really knows the exact answer, but I will tell you this, that the stock market is a precursor to what is happening in the economy, and I think much of what we've seen so far this year, in fact, you know, the quarterly statements will be closing out here in the next uh, nine days or so, and you'll be receiving those or seeing those, uh, those emails, your statements available, and it's going to be a little shocking when you open that up. But what we're seeing now, I think, is a preemptive strike of the stock market telling us a recession is looming next year. So I think that if the recession comes next year, the damage is probably already done in the stock market. So to answer your question, Greg, I think we're much closer to a low than a high. And the good news is, in the last 60 years, on average, from a bear market, we're in a bear market, from a bear market low, one year later, the market averages an increase of 44%. From a bear market low, one year later. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen a year from now, but on average, for the last 60 years, from a bear market, we've had pretty good moves. I'll be honest, maybe I'm like most people. I, I really keep my eye off the 401k. I know it's there and it's important for the Wormuth family and, and our future. Um, is it true that those that are purchasing for people's 401ks, people that are in the stock market, are they buying at a discount and should we celebrate that? I, I think so because 401ks is basically invisible investing. You put your money in every paycheck and you're buying more shares when the markets are down like this and then you're buying less shares when they when they move up so yes i think that this is a silver lining and certainly creates tremendous opportunity i believe that the market is getting in that discounted area we're extremely oversold uh, there's extreme bearishness out there that is usually when things start to turn around so you've touched on it and i want to you know we're trying to you know dumb this down for me and maybe for anyone else that's kind of in my shoes what's the difference between the term bull market and bear market joy and misery <laughs> bull markets everybody's celebrating we love bull markets so you can't look everybody's a genius in a bull market but you really uh, you, you earn your bones uh, in a bear market and that's the that's the troubling part the, the technical definition of a bear market is a decline of 20 percent or more and that we have seen in all the major averages except for the dow jones but the Dow Jones really is not indicative of the entire stock market. It's mostly the S&P 500. What will these bumps in the interest rate hike do? You said that we're not done yet with the Fed doing that. What, what is the goal of the Fed when it bumps the hikes and what will that mean to us? Is it better in the long term but bad in the short term? It's certainly going to be bumpy in the short term. Uh, long term is probably going to end up being better for the economy because they want to curb inflation. They want to slow the economy down. So a rise in interest rates immediately, what you're going to see is if you have credit card debt, you're going to start seeing, oh, by the way, we just bumped your rate a percent or 2%. So what that's going to do is going to have people out there, consumers, think twice whether they want to go out and spend this amount of money on something they may not necessarily need and pay 20% interest, 18% interest. It's also going to slow down the housing market, which has been a big part of this economy, uh, because now a mortgage is around six and a quarter percent, and just last year about three, three and a half percent. Which on a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, it increases your payment around five, six hundred dollars a month. All right, I know you're called the stock doctor. You're also my mental doctor today because I think you made me and hopefully our viewers feel a little bit better about uh, this rocky ride that we've been on lately. Thank you, Lee. 
Glad I could help, Greg. Absolutely. All right. Hopefully our guests today have answered many of your questions regarding these difficult times. And again, thank you to Clark Howard and Lee Seiler, the stock doctor, and thank you for watching. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your weekend and take care.